Okay, uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, attending this webinar. My name is Stan Kokevich. I'm the Deputy Treasurer for DAV Department of Wisconsin. My contact num member, uh, <laughs> number and email are on the screen. Just want to remind you, this is coming to you live and unrehearsed. So we're going to uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, this, hopefully this isn't going to be real dry, all right? But uh, we haven't had a lot of trouble with people doing the, the annual financial report, but I'm sure everybody's gonna learn something along the way. I think we're gonna start with the accounting year for DAB is uh, July 1 through June 30. Uh, the due date for AFRs is September 30th. Any chapter that has not submitted an annual financial report by September 30th will be considered for an it, uh, for being in a delinquent or status or suspension or revocation of charter. So this is, you know, kind of serious stuff here. You want to uh, go ahead and get it done. Uh, I know a lot of chapters take the summer off, but you can go ahead and do this and then uh, have, uh, when you get back together, you know, like August or whenever, have your finance committee sign it and uh, get it turned in before September 30th. The first thing you want to do is gather your information, bank statements uh, from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022, your checkbook register and your annual financial report kit. And hopefully you all re uh, printed your kit so you can kind of follow along as we go through here. Uh, I got directions here on how to find the annual report kit going through uh, DAV.org. In the email I sent out, I just included the link just to make things easy for everybody. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to find this kit in, in uh, DAV.org. First, when you go into DAV.org, you're going to get this screen and you notice the title membership. And under membership, it says members only, okay? And then when you click on members only, it gives you a place to put in your membership number. Now, this is kind of unique because as long as you don't shut off your computer, once you put your membership number in here, uh, let's say you go eat supper or lunch or your favorite TV program comes on or the kids come over and you don't shut your computer off, you just put it to sleep. When you open it back up, you can go back into membership without having to put your membership number in. And there's no place to sign out of this. So uh, I talked to Doug Wells about this. He said there's nothing in there that needs to be behind a, a firewall anyway. So my question is, why do we need to sign in to begin with? All right, now, next you go, look, you're gonna find the screen, and this is just the bottom part of this, uh, screen you look down the lower left hand corner there where it says all alpha order and this is a alphabetical list of everything that DAV has to offer as far as uh, links to things all right notice you got DAV store on the left side uh, there's other webinars out there all kinds of neat stuff so you know when you got time just Go in here and you know snoop around, see what's going on. You're not going to break it, okay? Now, when we when we open that all uh, alpha, then we see a page that looks like this, and there's two columns. Like I say, there's all kinds of neat stuff in here. Now, as we look go down this, and just above the arrow, you're going to find the thing that says Annual Financial Report AFR Cheat Sheet. You can look at that. Look at that if you want to, but that was made in nineteen in uh, twenty twenty. We are now in twenty twenty one. Some of the stuff may not apply. Below that, it says annual financial report procedures presentation, and this was put on by uh, Ed Hartman, who is the Inspector General for DAV National. Uh, but it was put on. He did it in uh, twenty nineteen. Now there's some good information in there. You just got to remember some of that information is old information, okay? 
But where the, uh, you click on where the arrow's pointing, that's how you end up with the financial report kit that you now have in front of you, I hope. Okay. Now, print the instructions. And it's really hard not to because when you print the financial report kit, it's, it's, I think it's 12 pages. And the first uh, nine pages, I think, are all instructions. Read the instructions. You know, I, it's, this is not like putting together IKEA furniture, okay? Uh, you, you, everything's got to have a place and everything's got to be documented when you get done. No hiding anything underneath the couch cushion so the wife don't find it. Uh, income filing requirements. Now, notice it says gross income above 25000 excluding funding received from national. Uh, and if, if that's above 25000 then you have to send your completed financial report to both national headquarters and department headquarters. But it says if the amount listed on lines two through nine, uh, you're gonna, it is where you can determine whether it's above 25,000. You don't count, or excuse, yeah, you don't count line one. Line one is the apportionment that you receive from national. And we don't count that in your uh, uh, total income. Now, it'll tell you to add lines two through nine. Well, if you go to line 10 and subtract line two, you got the same thing, all right? And, and that way you don't have to do one operation instead of trying to add two through nine, okay? If your gross income is 25,000 or below, excluding line one, the funds we get from national, then we only have to submit this to the department headquarters. But there's a little caveat here that if your gross income was above $25,000 filing requirement, the immediate prior year, then it's requested you send a copy of the form to national, even though you'll be 25,000 or below. I uh, hope that's all clear to you. Uh, if not, you know, uh, I, what the email I sent you has my phone number on it. You can call me and we'll talk about this or if it need be, I'll come see you. All right. Now there, there's a, only a, a, only one chapter I know of that has a, a gross income of over 300,000. And they have to have a CPA complete their report. So uh, for the majority of us, uh, we don't have to worry about that. All right. Now, they're only going to take digital submissions of the AFR. Uh, and, and this is including all the required supporting documents, all, all the uh, schedules and think and uh, letters of uh, acknowledgement and all that stuff. So, and it gets emailed, if it's going to national, it goes emailed to AFRI info at DAV.org. If it's going to the department, then it's uh, BD, BDAV at uh, S, SBCglobal.net. All right, so uh, I've had, People, what if, what, what do we do now? You've uh, completed your financial report, and now you have to have three people sign it. Well, and you have, and the treasurer has to sign it. Well, you print it, get your uh, financial uh, team together, your uh, to to sign it. Now you have to scan it to send it to whoever you need to send it to. Don't forget to keep a copy for yourself. And if you don't have a scanner, you can always go to a library, a, a, a Staples, a Office Depot, things like that, or maybe even your CF, C, CVSO would do it for you. So, uh, so once you get everything signed, then you have to be able to submit it uh, digitally. Uh, 
Now the liquid acid report, acid report, uh, this form is only used to report only cash assets of a department or chapter, DA by financial report purposes, cash liquid assets are asset for liquid, for DAV purposes, liquid assets are in the cash of, uh, form of cash or any readily, re thing that is readily converted to cash. Like I said, this is live and unrehearsed. Anyway, uh, examples. Is your check and savings account, cash on hand, certificates of deposit, market value investments at the end of the accounting period, and any other assets readily convertible to, convertible to cash like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or any other securities that the chapter may have. All right. Now, we get down to the form. The form is a fillable form. It's a fillable PDF. Uh, you start, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you put in the amounts, the form will do the math. Such a deal. All right. Uh, the beginning balance of the form must be the assets listed at line 27 of last year's financial report. Now, if for some reason, you're a new treasurer and you don't have last year's financial report, call Deirdre at the uh, department office and she has a copy of it. And she'll tell you what that number is, okay? And line one is all funding that comes from national headquarters. Now, usually, well, last year I believe it came in on 8th of July. Uh, National paid a dollar and a half for every paid up member that you had in your chapter. And this was uh, sent direct deposit to your bank account. All right. Line two is forget me not receipts. So when you hold your, your forget me nots, anything you take in it from those forget me not drives, it goes there. If you're doing bingo, uh, then you, uh, put your receipts for bingo, thrift store. I don't believe we have one in the state anymore. I don't know if anybody has a bar or a lounge. But nine six is interest and dividend income. And so if you've got a, an account that's paying interest, and this gets me every once in a while because when I, I, I have a, a workbook that I use to keep track of things, and every time I uh write a check or receive money for something i i immediately put it in but the interest comes in at the end of the month with the bank statement sometimes i forget it and i'm off by 14 cents and then i have to oh yeah interest okay uh in-kind donations during the accounting period uh somebody somebody donates a power wheelchair or a, a scooter or something that has to, you have to uh, assign a cash value to that and count it as income. All right. Uh, we did a forget me not drive. Someone put a $250 gift card in, in, the, in the bucket. That was an in kind donation. Okay. Uh, any increase in market value of investments on line 26, and we'll get there, and that's a, it's a little bit of bouncing back and forth between 26 and 8 and 9, but it all works out, okay? So you may not find that until the end of the year, uh, or maybe, well, yeah, we're at the end of the year anyway. Okay, other income. All other monies that do not fall into any of the above categories. And you have to attach a schedule indicating all sources of such income, specific amount received uh, for each, as well as a copy of all legal, get legal gifting documents, any bequeaths or trust receives, received, okay? So, you know, I, I keep a, a folder in my computer. What I do is anytime I get anything that I'm going to need a, a schedule for 
and I need to document it. When I got a scanner, I just scan it, put it in that folder. So at the end of the year, I just print whatever's in the folder and I'm good to go. Uh, otherwise, you, you can just keep a, a manila folder or, or something like that. And just anytime you get something that you're going to need to the end of the year, just stick it in there. Keep it in a safe place. Total income. Again, now we're at, now we're going to count line one. So your total income is a sum of, sum of line one through nine. Do not include the beginning balance. Beginning balance sits up at the top of this thing and just kind of stays there. And everything else is going to work off of that. Okay. And we're going to do something with that eventually. All right. Now, expenses and disbursements. All right. Give it a minute. Here we go. Okay. Now, line 11. Because line 10 was our uh, total income. Okay. So now we're at line 11. And administrative personnel, salaries, benefits, payroll taxes, and all that. And there's only one chapter I know of that really has to worry about that. Uh, and, and they got an accountant that takes care of it, so I'm not, we're not going to worry about that. Line 12 is conventions, seminars, meetings. Uh, report the amount of expenses for conventions conferences, schools of instruction. So if you've got somebody going to a uh, service officer school, that would also go into line 12, uh, I think. Uh, and uh, meetings, including monthly membership meetings. So if you are paying somebody, like say, you know, they live far away, they're only gonna come to a meeting if you pay a mileage, uh, you could do that and then it's going to get expensive, but that would be on line 12. Uh, something about line 12 is all they're asking for is the amount, dollar amount. They are not asking for who you paid it to, okay? Uh, and then you got to attach a listing of the specific events and the total amount paid. So, you know, we go to a district conference, so district conference, we had five people attend. We paid a mileage and um, maybe they had a lunch, so we paid for the lunch. So that would go under uh, district conference. Then you got uh, department convention there again, people that attended, what you might have paid hotel rooms and mileage and meals. So whatever you paid, you got to break it down by category on, uh, the schedule, okay? Uh, hospitality rooms, we don't, I don't think we do that anymore. I remember when I first started in DAB, they used to do that. And any other expenses that are related to uh, training or, or a, an event, okay? Now, Line 13 is post office and office supplies. Uh, some chapters send out uh, uh, meeting reminders on postcards, or maybe you send out a newsletter. Uh, that is service related postage. It is not office supply related postage. Okay. So it. Anything having to do with uh, service will go on line 14 and you know, meeting reminders, newsletters, things like that are all service. Uh, total amount expenses for administrative non-service postage, office supplies, pencil, paper, ink cartridges, thing like that. They will all, all go on line 12, excuse me, line 13, okay? Uh, now line 13 has, a, or excuse me, line 14 has its own, did I skip a page? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, line 14 has its own uh, page, okay? And so anything having to do with service is gonna go on this page for line 14. 
Now there's also a line item on AFR for line 14. What you gotta be careful of is when you do all your stuff for line 14, and uh, all of that has to equal what you put on line 14 on AFR. And then you got to do schedules for the items on line 14. And each schedule have, has to uh, equal whatever you put for an amount on the page of line 14. I know this sounds kind of uh, screwed up, a little difficult, but it's not. Kind of, okay. Uh, the service expense schedule for line 14, and there's a form number. Uh, let me get there. And it's in the, in like page two of the uh, annual financial, well, well, actually it's page eight, I believe, of the report kit. It's right after the annual financial report. And each line listed on the form provider describes of what is to be reported on that specific line, uh, as well as additional schedules and attachments that may be required. So if you've got to, you know, when you look at this, if a line doesn't apply, leave it blank. And everything else you do is going to have a place to go. You, you, they don't want you inventing things and say, okay, I don't see any place to put this, so I'm going to put it, line this out and put it here. You don't do that. <laughs> you, you run into that situation, call me, I'll help you out. All right. Uh, so, service expense schedules for line 14, uh, donations to VA medical centers. Uh, donations to vet state veterans' homes, donations to the Columbia Trust, National Service Foundation, uh, DAV, now this is a tricky one, DAV Transportation Network Vehicle uh, Grant Program. Now this is money, this is not the state DAV Transportation Program, this is the national. The state will go, it's, it'll go on line 14, but not under this program, okay? Uh, payments directly to a trust for for a program, VABS programs, all that. Now, you have to read the line items because some of these, uh, they want, uh, well, let me get the line items out here just so I don't mess up here. I got them highlighted, okay. So donations to the medical center, you have to have a, let's, like we got uh, Middleton, we've got Milwaukee, we've got uh, Toma, uh, Iron Mountain, okay. So if you're donating to more than one medical center, you have to include a schedule, even if you're only doing one. In the schedule, it has to specify which, me which medical center you're making the donations to and how much. State veterans' homes, the same thing. Uh, which home, how much to each one? Now, donations to Columbia Trust and the National Service Foundation. If we make uh, a, a donation to Columbia Trust or National Service Foundation, those both go to national and they will send you back a letter saying thank you for doing this. You have to include that recognition letter in your uh, annual financial report packet. Uh, the National Service Foundation will not only send you a thank you letter, they'll tell you what the cumulative lifetime donations that your chapter has made to the National Service Foundation in that letter, okay? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, service expense schedule. Now, service programs. Uh, hang on. 
Okay, P publication of newsletters. Uh, other VAVS program. Uh, and you have to attach a, a, a schedule listing the name of the organization, the name of the program, total program expense, and a copy of the recognition letter. Uh, what else would be a service program? Uh, Fisher House, Honor Flight, uh, things of that nature. Those would be service programs. Uh, I think Child Welfare, no, they don't have, yeah, Child Welfare, I think, has their own line. If not, that would be on here. Okay. And then we get down to direct assistance to needy veterans and their families. Now, if if you are going to make a, a direct assistance to a needy family, and what my chap, what chapter 44 has done, and you know, I'm a certified Navy instructor. You always tell me don't use yourself as an example, but I'm the best example I got. Uh, CVSO called, said, hey, I got a guy. He was homeless, he can get an apartment now, but he has to pay uh, an electric bill from the last place he lived that has never been paid before they'll turn on the electricity. So I called the electric company and I got the amount that he, that he owed and we paid this to the electric company in his name, got a receipt from the electric, electric company all right and but we also when we list this we have to give the name of the veteran that got that we were actually helping out okay now uh this form here notice this in parentheses here says financial assistance form optional all right this is the form it's an optional form and when i showed you where to find the uh annual financial report kit Look under finance, uh, financial assistance, and you'll get this form. This is also a fillable PDF form. And you get the veteran's signature and the signature of the commander and all this. Remember that anytime you're going to write a check for anything, this should be recorded in your uh, minutes of your meeting. Okay? Any minute money you receive should be recorded in the minutes of your meeting. So, okay, publication of newsletters, periodicals, okay. Now, again, uh, any postage you use for this newsletter to mail it out is going to be listed under line 14. It's not going to be under the other postage line, okay? In-kind donations, all right? So let's say somebody donates you a, a power wheelchair or a, a scooter or something. And now you're going to donate that to somebody else. Hopefully, you're going to get it in and, and donate it out the same year. Okay. So, whatever value you put on that when you got it, it should have the same value when you donate it. Okay. Just to make things come out even. Uh, maybe you had to put a battery in this thing or something. Now, that goes under other expenses. Okay. Uh, so again, this form for line 14 for the schedule is a fill in form, it does the math, whatever the bottom line is, goes on line 14 of the AFR form, right? <clears throat> line 15, forget me not expenses. Once upon a time, uh, the only thing we could, uh, claim is a forget-me-not expense was anything we bought from DAV. They have changed that. 
now anything that's associated with forget me not or with forget me not. So maybe you got somebody that's traveling 40 miles to do a forget me not in your area and you're going to pay a mileage to get there. That would be a forget me not expense. Here we got Miller Park uh, that lets us do forget me nots and we have to pay for parking. Now, of course, you know, the carpool. So only one guy is paying paying the parking fee, but that parking fee is a forget me not expense. Maybe you're going to be out there for six hours or so, and you're going to buy the person a lunch. That lunch becomes a forget me not expense. All right. So anything that has to do with forget me nots is a forget me not expense. Bingo expenses now. Expenses for voluntary bingo sessions held for disabled veterans at any VMC and or nursing home for veterans should be reported on line 14 because that is a service, okay? Now, if you are doing forget-me-nots and way back at the beginning of this thing, you had uh, income for forget-me-nots, and you're doing this as, as, as you know to raise money for your chapter. Now the expense goes on line 16. Okay. And uh, we no longer have thrift stores that I know of. Although if you Google DAV thrift store, one comes up in Milwaukee, but it really doesn't exist. And uh, bar and lounge expenses, I don't think we have any of those in Wisconsin that are owned by DAV. All right, line 19. Now the chapter home, and we'll just talk about that because the department does their own thing. Report total amount of expenses associated with the chapter meeting place and operation expenses. And this includes, you know, your rent or if you got a mortgage or, you know, uh, maybe you're paying utilities, uh, insurance, things like that, maintenance on the building. I know some uh, some chapters they share a building with other organizations, so you have a, a a portion of whatever it takes to maintain that building. Notice here in the green it's banking expenses. So, what kind of expenses do you have for banking? If you have to buy checks. If your ch bank charges you for checks, blank checks, that is a banking expense, and it goes under line uh, 19. All right, office furniture, other things related to maybe you're buying chairs for a chapter meeting or something like that, or uh, anything related to uh, meeting the daily operation of the building. Uh, if you rent in the building, you probably you, know, you probably could buy pretty cheap. Okay. Then, oops. Decrease in market value investments on line 26. And you're going to put this on line 20 because that we're going to list that as an expense. So if you had some kind of investment, a lot of investments are losing money right now. But then there's a lot of investments that are gaining money. But anyway, all depend. I, who knows? But if it's losing money. They're going to put on uh, line 20. And uh, this is any decreased value in the market value of an investment at the end of the accounting period goes on line 26. Okay, so that's a little confusing, but if it's an expense, it's on line 20. If it's cash due with market value, is line 26. Line 21, other expenses. And this could be just about anything, anything you spend money on. Uh, maybe you're buying uh, uniform caps from your chapter members. Chapter 44 has a, thing, has a thing where if you attend five chapter meetings, we'll buy you a uniform cap. Uh, we also have... Uh, if you bring in a new member, we'll pay you $25, kind of like a finder's fee. Those all go on line 21, other expenses. 
Again, you have to attach a schedule that identifies the reason for each uh, payment. And the total has to equal on that schedule has to e equal the total on your line 21. Uh, I, I get to see as deputy treasurer, I get to see other chapters expenses and you know, line 21 is you know, $143 and they only got 140, but their schedule said they, they spend $150, you know, they have to equal, all right. Uh, also on line 21, depreciation of fixed assets, real estate equipment must not be listed as expense or dis disbursement on the financial report. Now there is another report for listing depreciation and things like that. So that doesn't go on line 21. On line 21, only income actually earned, received and money actually spent or dispersed in the accounting period should be reported anywhere on the chat, on the uh, AFR. Line 22. Now uh, this is the total the total expenses, okay? And so what it's doing is, and again, the system does the math. You just fill in the amount. So the sum of lines 11 to 21 comes out to be total expenses. And then the ending balance is your is here's where the beginning balance comes in. It's sat up there by itself like the Maytag repairman until now. And uh, so to, to take the mission, again, the math is done for you. Beginning balance plus the total income minus total expenses equals the ending balance. Okay, we're almost done. Statement of liquid assets. Lines 23 to, through 27. Now this is after we have our ending balance, okay? Lines 23 to 27 on the form, report only liquid cash assets, which for DAV financial reporting purposes are assets that are in cash form or readily convertible to cash. Remember earlier we said anything that readily convertible to cash is uh, things like, uh, CDs, investments, and things like that. All right, now, remember that this does not include fixed assets such as real estate, furniture, vehicles, and all this inventory. And we've got another piece of paper to record all that on, okay? And that's called the other assets schedule. Uh, so if you have you know all furniture and vehicles and a building and all that stuff that goes on this other form i think most of us really don't have to bother with that but uh if you do need to do it it's there and if you have questions on it call me all right line 23 this is checking account cash on hand report the total amount of all checking accounts on last day of the accounting period, June 30th. Also report all cash on hand at that time. Attach a copy of only the bank statements closest to the end of date of the accounting period for each checking account. So I don't know how many of us have more than one checking account, but anyway. Uh, it says closest to the end of the reporting period. The, the bank chapter 44 uses we go from the first of the month to the end of the month. Uh, you know, from the first to the 30th or 31st, whatever the last day of the month is. But I have a personal account that goes from the ninth of the month to the ninth of the following month. And I let my wife take care of that one drives her nuts because it's not going from the first to the 30th, okay? So whatever's closest to the end of the accounting period, uh, savings accounts. Now, if you have savings account, report total amounts in all savings account on the last day of the accounting period. Attach a copy only the bank statements close to the end again. 
uh, lines 23 and 24, if the total amount of reported on either of these lines differs from the closing balance shown on the bank statement, provide a copy of the reconciliation page of each check in or savings account. Now, about record, you know, some people it's referred to as uh, a reconciliation of the bank statement. Others refer to balancing the checkbook. Either way, it's the same thing, all right? And just as an aside, anytime you make a financial report to your chapter, you should have a reconciled bank statement with you, okay? This way, uh, nobody can accuse you of doing anything funny. You got the bank that says you did it. You reconcile that, it equals to what you got in the checkbook, and life is good, okay? All right, 25, I catch up here. Reconciliation page, checking account, savings account. Okay. <clears throat> Certificates of deposit. And what we want here is the value of the CD, not the purchase price. Okay. All certificates of deposit on the last day of the accounting period. Uh, attach a copy of only the bank statement closest to the ending date of the accounting period or a letter from the financial institution holding the CD verifying the value at the end of the accounting period. All right. Be, be sure to properly report all CD interest earned on line six. Okay. Now, when I first looked at this, way back when, I said, you know, this looks like we're, we're counting things twice in two different places, but really it's not at all, at all equals, believe me, okay? Uh, so interest earns goes on line six, the value goes on line uh, 25. Okay, market value investments. Uh, at the end of the accounting period, we total, record, report total market value investments on the last day of the accounting period. Attach the copy only the, of only the investments statement closest to the end of the end of the accounting period. Uh, investments include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or any other securities that your chapter may have. And line 27, total assets. Now, the sum of lines 23 to 26, in all cases, this figure must equal the amount reported as an ending balance. Reports that do not balance will not be accepted. So, this line 27 enter, end, ending balance is gonna be your beginning balance for next year, okay? Or we're working on uh, program year 2021 to 2022, like this is be the good report you're filling out. What's ever on line 27 is gonna be a beginning balance for program year 22 to 23, all right? All right, now pages seven and eight of your uh, annual financial report kit has examples of schedules. And simple schedules in proper format clearly identify the source of income and the reasons for disbursement, and they're required for any line indicating an attached schedule is needed and amount is listed on that line, all right? Now, when I was putting this together, I was looking at the schedules. And in one schedule, I believe it's for not line nine, it says, 
uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway because somebody's going to catch this. Uh, membership dues four hundred dollars, and I said okay. They had ten people that joined and put a forty dollar down payment, and so they had a list that as an income on line nine for the other income, and it was four hundred dollars. Well, then I went over to disbursements. And on line 21, they had membership dues $300. So I sent an email to National and said, hey, what's going on here? Shouldn't that be $400? And they came back and said, hey, it's just an example. Well, okay. I call it a bad example, but anyway, it worked. <laughs> but uh Whatever comes in has to kind of equal what's going out. Okay. All right. Okay. Page seven and eight. And we need attachments and we need the schedules. Uh, in line, f anytime we, we pay out money under line 14, you're going to need, uh, a thank you letter, okay, from whoever you sent it to, right? So, so the total amount, the total amount for the schedule must equal the dollar amount for line nine. If you're schedule line nine, this is an example. So, anytime you've got a schedule listing all the stuff that you paid money to or all the stuff you received money from then you have to that whatever line that schedule is for has to equal the amount on that line okay so if your schedule for line nine equals three hundred dollars line nine better have three hundred dollars on it okay all right then down at the bottom we got a place to put the <clears throat> the name and the location of the bank Now, here in Milwaukee, we, we go through uh, U.S. Bank, and there's, you know, a ton of these places. So the one I listed is the one that the account was opened with 20 years ago. Because anytime we need to do anything, it always had, you know, it's, uh, it's easier to go through that bank, like, changing signers and stuff like that than to go to another bank and then they say, well, I got to send this to the bank you open the account. So we just go to the one we open the account at. If you're, you only, you only have one bank of that type in, in town and whatever, whatever bank you're using or credit union or, you know, it may be easier that way. Okay. And so like you said, if city, state, zip code of all finance institutions, banks, loans that you're that are holding any funds for your chapter. Now, you also have to list the, the names of authorized signers. Okay. Uh, all checks have to be signed by at least two people. So, uh, and you know, in your constitution and bylaws, it should list who the author, authorized signers are. Now, it doesn't have to be somebody's name, but it can be their position, such as commander, adjutant, uh, commander, treasurer, adjutant, treasurer, however your constitution and bylaws say that. Uh, chapter 44, we got three signatures, three signers on the, for the checks that are on signature, signers that on file. Uh, me being the treasurer of the chapter, if I'm going to be reimbursed for something, I'm not going to write myself a check and sign it. So even though I write out the check, we also have the commander and the adjutant to do the signing. Or right now, we've got a commander and a trustee that do the signing for a check that's going to reimburse me for something. So or, you know, if the commander is going to get a check, then it'll be me and the trustee. So. That way, you know, kind of transparency and nobody's writing a check to themselves. 
okay? Like I said, it's all up in your constitution bylaws, what does it say? Okay, now, your audit committee financial report must be signed and dated by three members of the department chapter audit committee as indicated in the lower left-hand corner of the report. And I believe now we even have to include uh, membership numbers for the people on the audit committee. We had an uh, incident <laughs> last year, early this year, where they, they turned in a, a chapter option, a chapter nomination report, and the national kept kicking it back. And what happened was, is they had somebody as a chapter officer that wasn't in the chapter. They thought the person was transferred in, and you know, it didn't happen. So we had to get them transferred in before they could become an officer of the chapter. Anyway, uh, excluded from the audit committee are the commander, senior vice commander, treasurer, adjutant, and the finance committee chairman. None of those people can sign in the left-hand side as an audit person. All right. Uh, then on the right-hand side of this thing, on the bottom, it says it's got to be signed by the department treasurer. Must be signed, dated, submitted by the department chapter or chapter treasurer, indicated in the lower right-hand corner of the report. And then, after you do all this, there is in the annual financial report. Uh, instructions or kit is an, an is a checklist. It's a good idea to go back through that checklist, check off things just to make sure it you know cross all the T's, dot all the I's, and everything is is ready to go. If if you have to send these, you know, it's amazing. I don't know. How, well, I used to know, but I don't know how many chapters we have in the United States for DAV. But I don't know how many people they got national to uh, check these things. But I have got reports from national saying, okay, you put this in the wrong category. Don't do it again. <laughs> so, uh, they, if you're sending it to national, national does look at these things. And now that they raised the, the, the income limit above $25,000, there's less of them. So they, you know, it's easier for to check them. If you send them, if your income level is 25,000 or less, and then they go to department, Deirdre, uh, Flynn, the bookkeeper for, uh, Department of Wisconsin, she checks these. So they're going to be looked at. Now, again, the checklist on page nine of the kit and where to send these to. And all this information is uh, available in the uh, financial report kit. And as a reminder, hard copy reports are not accepted. You have to send them in by email. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, call me. Uh, if my phone number is on the email that I sent you, and also my uh, uh my email so like i said we can do it on the phone if i can't do it on the phone i'll come i'll come and see you all right stan you have some yes. questions